Okay, doing a quick demonstration uh, for layer masking. Open the software, GIMP 2.8 this year, and then we're going to add in a picture. So I'm just heading off to where I keep my pictures and finding a woman a big hair. And in she goes. Okay, so the purpose of layer masking is to make sure that uh, if we have something with a lot of fine detail, such as hair, uh, that we're able to keep that detail. We couldn't possibly get in with a with a brush and and uh, save each one of these individual hairs and these gaps and stuff in here. So we're going to use layer masking to um, take care of that detail. So first step is to bring the picture in. Second step is to add a transparency to that layer. So I'm adding a transparency. Then we are going to duplicate the layer. So back up to layer and duplicate layer. So if we come over and look at layers, we've got our background layer and then we've got our mask that we're going to build up here. So I'm just going to double click on that, change that to mask so I know that that one's that, hit my enter key and have that there in place. Uh, make sure you have that layer selected. So over here on the right, select that layer and go into your colors and you want to desaturate. So we're going to turn that to black and white first, or I should say grayscale. And we're going to say OK to that. And now we have desaturated. We're going to go back into colors and into brightness and contrast. And what we're trying to do is we're going to try to make things as black and white as possible. I'm just going to bring up my brightness up to about 50 on this. I want to try to keep my whites white and my darks extremely dark. But I don't want to lose the detail in the hair. If I go too far this way, you can see that right in here I lose a bit of hair. Right here I'm gapping on the hair. I don't want to lose any of that there or over here. So I need to be careful of that. So I'm just going to pull back my brightness level a little bit, or my contrast level, until I can see maybe the hair fill in there. So it's a kind of a balancing act. I'm trying to keep that level of detail. I can see it coming back in, coming back in, and I might have to take it maybe all the way down to uh, maybe a 35, something like that. Again, you can play with your brightness and your darkness. And we're playing around with the levels there to see if we can get that to fill in nicely. All right. I'm going to click on OK on that. Once we get that in place, we're going to keep in mind that anything that, when we layer mask, anything that is black will disappear. Anything that is white will be kept. So what we want to get rid of is all of this stuff here. So we're going to head off to um, basically do a do an inversion here. So with this with this selected, we're going to go to colors and then I'm going to do an invert. So again, remember, anything that is white is kept. So her hair and all of these little pieces here will be kept and all these little black gaps and things that you see here will disappear. Unfortunately, we're also going to lose her face as well. So what we want to do there is we want to grab a paintbrush and we're going to swap our foreground and background colors with these two little arrows here. And what I'll do is I'll use my paintbrush, I'll grab a solid brush, and I'm going to increase my brush size and I'm just going to start painting white. And whenever I paint white as well as the things that are already white in the picture will be kept. So I want to keep her face, so I'm going to paint that white. And I want to keep her chin and neck in that area there, and maybe even some of this detail right here. And I'm just trying to stay a little bit away from the outside of her hair, because that's where the fine detail is. And taking that. So anything that is white, again, we are 
we are keeping. Perfect. Once we have that in place, we're going to go edit and we'll cut that. So we've just cut that layer. You can see from up here that that layer has now disappeared. And here's where we're going to add the layer masking part. So under layer, we're going to layer and mask, add layer mask. And you can see over here in the dialog box that it says white full opacity. And basically what that means, anything that is white in our mask will keep. Anything that is black, we will see through. So we're going to add that. And you can see right here it adds this little masking to the picture. So what we want to do is we want to copy and paste that um, picture that we had previously just cut and put on our clipboard. So we're going to paste it there. So make sure that you select right here. You want to go edit and we want to paste and we just paste and what you notice is anything that was black has disappeared and anything that was white has been kept so that works out for us there's a couple little areas in here that I might have maybe uh, should have left alone but for now we're okay now what we want to do is we want to anchor these two things together we have this floating section in this here so we'll right click here anchor that into place and now you can see how our masking works anything that's white will be kept and anything that is black will disappear so for example if I still have my paintbrush if I paint with paint with white you'll see that um, things will start to come back see the background coming back in there And you can kind of see up in my mask that when I paint with white, it keeps that area. I don't want to do that, so I'm just going to go to Control Z to undo what I just did. But you do notice I have a couple of areas here that I don't necessarily want to keep. So I could make my brush smaller and go in and take those out, but I'm just going to leave them for now. So if we're happy with the results of that, and again, you can see that we have all this fine detail. We didn't have to go in with an eraser and erase all in these areas here to keep that detail in her hair. We can now go in and put in a different background in behind that, that picture. So I'm happy with that. Let's say that I want to go and grab and put in a, uh, a different background. First of all, I should find out what the size of this picture is. So I'm going to go into my images and look at my image properties. My image properties tell me that this picture is fairly large, 2560 by 1600 pixels. I might be hard pressed to find a good background to fit against that, so I could reduce the size of this. So maybe what I'll do is I'll scale this picture down first. So I'll go into Image, Scale Image, and I'm going to reduce it to maybe, uh, let's go with an 800 here and scale that down. Let's hit Enter. It's locked and in proportion with my lock maintained here, scaling it down. Perfect. And now I'm going to go find a background that might fit that. So I'll head off to Google. And uh, let's see if we can do a search up in here in, in Google. There we go. And I'll look for, uh, yeah, let's go with uh, sunset, a nice sunset. And here we go with the sunset. And we'll search our images. And let's make sure that our sunset image is larger than 800, which was the size that we picked. So I'll get one that's 1024 by 768. So here's a number of sunsets that could work for me. I'm going to um, take this one right here. Niagara Falls and I'm going to go to the full-sized image there's the full-sized image I'm going to right click and I could either save the picture I'll save it so that you guys can uh, redo this one so I'll save the picture as I'll put it back in the same folder And this one is Niagara Falls Sunset. 
there and there. I'll save it back in there. And then I can open this and copy that background into place. So here's my Niagara Falls sunset. I'll drag and drop that into this picture. There it goes. And I need to make it go in underneath. So I'll just pull this layer down. And now you can see that that layer is in behind our model. You can see the sunset shines nicely through the different portions of her hair there. And there you have it. So we can, uh, once we're happy with that, again, I would save that as an XCF file because I want to maintain our layers. So I could save that file and do a save as. And I could call this one uh, model and sunset. I'll save that in the same location. And then I could export that. So my client could take a look at it to see whether or not my client liked that, that image. I'll do a file. This time I will export. So I'm going to export to the same location. It has some transparency in it, so I might want to save it as a ping. And this could be my version 1 going out to my client. And I will export. And save, keep the defaults, export. and that file is now saved in that folder. If I want to check to see what that ping file looks like, um, I can go in here, and here's my picture. Double click on it, and there's what the final product looks like. So there you have it. There's layer masking. Uh, again, you might want to go in and do some touch-ups uh, around some of the hair there. You can see that we do have some stray pixeling and things like that. You can always go back because we maintained and saved that uh, as an XCF or a GIMP project file, we can go back in and touch up some of that here now that I see it uh, and how it looks in here. All right, hope that was helpful.